midnight time in Ukrainian time. Hello, my friends. Best greetings from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Kursov. I'm a research entomologist, beekeeper, and teacher. And today is 26th day of July 2023, and we have time and opportunity to talk about Saturni, the silk moths. I'm studying parasitic hymenoptera, these tiny parasitic wasps of the superfamily Calcidoidae and family Trichogrammatidae, small egg parasitoids. They're also sometimes parasitoids of silk moths. But today we will be talking about Lepidoptera, about not about butterflies. If you like butterflies, yes, butterflies. These are butterflies flying in daytime. So we say daily butterflies. But there are a lot of nocturnal moths, tiny, small, middle size, and giant moths. And they are flying in nighttime, in midnight time. So we enjoy midnight time for searching host plant and for searching other sex for mating. So it's possible to collect them in midnight. So it's difficult and not many people know that nocturnal moths are flying in the mid time and they're absolutely beautiful and they're sometimes pretty, have a pretty big size. And today I have an opportunity to tell you the story about silk moths, which are relatively big, not the biggest. I will show you and I show you our living specimens because today I came from my job and evening time I found on my window sitting moth, living American moon moth, Actius Luna, and I will tell you about it. But don't forget that I'm telling you the stories about butterflies, about moths. Everything is so good, so beautiful, so lovely. Life is so good. Nature is absolutely beautiful around. And in Ukraine, everyone is enjoying coffee, tea, enjoying life. Don't forget that Ukraine is now in a very harsh situation. Ukraine is now fighting for independence. Ukraine is fighting for liberty, for the independence of state, for freedom of democracy. So that's why stand with Ukraine, support Ukraine. Press like for this video, subscribe to my channel and stand with Ukraine to support other bloggers who are talking about Ukraine, about Ukrainian history. But I'm talking about biology of different in insects, about biology of, and about entomology, the science of entomology. Despite our soldiers fighting for independence of Ukraine, I'm not so young to be in the army, but I stand with Ukraine and I support Ukrainian army. <clears throat> so press like to support Ukraine. If you do not like it, please press dislike and I don't worry about it. Unsubscribe from my channel completely. I do not worry about it at all. I have a lot of friends who are devoted biologists, who are devoted entomologists, who are devoted beekeepers and teachers and who stand with Ukraine and support Ukraine. Support my channel as well. I start to tell you about silk moths. By the way, do you know about moths something? Silk moths, this is one domesticated species. Bombix morio family Bombilidae. Bombicide. Bombicide, sorry about it. And this is a species Bombix mori, not so big one, about four centimeter size, 45 millimeters. This white, this is not Bombix mori, with two small individuals from collection of my friend Oleg from Chernigov region. He sent me this is small collection for exposition to show you some stag beetles and some butterflies and some moths. And here, here, these are silk moths. Bombix mori. Bombix mori is producing silk, which is used for commercial purposes, for industrial purposes, for making clothes, high quality, the highest quality silk. And where is silk? Silk is coming from cocoons, from these tiny cocoons. Yes. Caterpillars, they're producing cocoons. Yeah, this white. Moths, they, they lay eggs. Moths, females lay eggs. 
from eggs, larvae or caterpillars are coming, hatching, they're eating, feeding on mulberry leaves, and then just caterpillars, they're just pupating and making this kind of cocoons, they're pupating. And these cocoons are collecting, collect, were collected, this were collected by a leg, by the way, with exit holes, because these individuals just hatched from cocoons. And so a new generation is coming. And this silk moth, Bombyx mori, we have very small wings, very small wings. We even, they are not windless, but they are moveless. So they cannot fly as normal moths. So they cannot fly because they are domesticated for a thousand years in China, in Japan, in other Asian countries. And then they just secretly spread all around the world. And now it just this is not a secret at all. But not everyone had seen Bombyx mori. These white moths, this one, these are silk moths, Bombyx mori. But other moths were also called silk moths and were belonging to the family Saturnide, Saturnide. And these moths were quite big. As I said, these cocoons and inside cocoons there are some pupae sitting inside. So here I cannot see pupae inside, but these are other pupae of hawk, hawk moth, so they do not make cocoon. So some moths were making cocoons, some others they do not make cocoons. So this is not a rubbish, this is not a some piece of dust. Yeah, this is living organism. This is not living organism, this is dead pupa, just for ex exhibition for collection. But she, in other cocoons, we were sitting here inside, in other pupa, we have been sitting inside this lovely, so enjoyable silk moth cocoons. So what's about our moths? Our moths, they're sitting here in other jar because I separated them carefully because moths, as I said, they are nocturnal. They prefer to fly. And they emerged from these white cocoons. I showed one week ago this cocoon, this piece of these branches with these two white cocoons. Yes, this white cocoon and this one. One is brownish and one is whitish, but inside the larvae, not larvae, initially the larvae, caterpillar were making this cocoon from a silk, produced from silk, silk glands, and then appeared this cocoon, and here there are two exit holes. Moth just came out, emerged from this cocoon, so beautiful moth, and I will show you this moth. I have another cocoon, this gray one, this gray one, and this is bigger one. This is a female, and this is a male, and they belong to another moth. This is two different cocoons, one big one, quite heavy, and another one is much smaller. This is a male. The small one is a male, this is a big one, a female, and they are belonging to also silk moths of this genus and this species, giant peacock moth, or Saturne Piri in Latin name. Saturne Piri in Latin name, this species is included in the Red Book of Protected Species in Ukraine and other countries, in many countries of Europe, fortunately in many countries of Europe. That's not protected species and living in Indonesia. In Ukraine, it's living also in Indonesia, more or less in the southern region of Ukraine. But this, I got this beautiful cocoons from larvae, from caterpillars at home in the laboratory. And now I will show you another. This is Saturnia pavonia. I show you carefully Saturnia pavonia. You see, and this is Satur Saturnia piri, Satur giant peacock moth, quite a big one, 
approximately with this size 10 12 centimeters or up to 15 centimeters size so quite a big one but approximately like other big i show you like other big silk moths for instance this is oak silk moth oak silk moth anterne antere pierne perne i collected it in a biological laboratory in china i got it just a gift from china so i brought some cocoons home a few years ago and just this beautiful moth just silk of this beautiful silk moth oak silk moth just hatched in a midnight in winter and it was a great big surprise very funny and it was about our little individual i will i'm trying to show you carefully if i will not, if i will not ex escape because as i said i have two individuals i cannot be very happy about ex exhibition but who knows this one Wait. this one this one this is a male male of Arctias luna american moon moth originally the culture was received from canada by some lepidopterists in ukraine so this species is bred in captivity so some lepidopterists in ukraine keeping them in captivity just for curiosity and maybe for possibility of introduction <clears throat> i am not i don't like uh, this possibility of introduction because there is another species actias artemis which is living in other areas in the far east of palearctic region actias artemis is very similar with this one so it can be like kind of invasive species so this is a male male has a very nice hairy antenna very nice one not so heavy but quite a beautiful one yeah pink green color and you see about 10 centimeters size well be one 12 centimeters size 12 centimeters lifespan Saturnide most very interesting because they do not feed on sugar in syrup so you don't need to feed them because they have not developed mouth parts so that's why you need only to keep them carefully in container you lo like to receive them for mating purposes and this is a male and i show you more active female i am afraid about it because female is more active and can escape easily who knows female is very heavy sorry one container fell down yes this is lovely female i'm sorry and another one female has a very tiny antenna not so hairy Yes, you say this is a male and this is female. Female has a quite a big body, big abdomen, 
in the male has a very small body, but but very big antenna. Yes, and female looks pretty nice as well. If we wear, will be okay. We can be mating in captivity, and we can receive next generation. It means we can receive some eggs in container, and eggs will be hatching. Some caterpillars can be hatched from eggs. Very nice, very, very big, very fat abdomen. We can, can produce a lot of eggs. I guess more than 100 eggs can be produced from one this lovely female. Oh, I oh, wait, wait, wait. Too much light. Uh, let's see. A greenish color, a greenish color, yellow and green color, very pale, very pale green color. So originally this species is living in North America, in Canada, so we don't have this species in the nature, so we're keeping it only in captivity for for a little bit for curiosity and scientific purposes to modify the uh, breeding technique how to breed species of Saturnidae in captivity Saturnia piri which I showed you just this chikakon this is native species so it can be easily bred not easily so very carefully can be bred in laboratory so this is big cocoon female and big and small cocoon male. Saturnia piri can be bred in laboratory or at home and then just can be released in the nature. But this one better don't release because this is not native species. But even if you release, maybe 99% of generation of caterpillars can be eaten by predators like different birds maybe some lizards as well, because you see most is quite big in size, as I said, about 12 centimeters lifespan. 12, yes, 12 and a half centimeters lifespan. So this nice American moon moth. So if you have up interest in breeding of caterpillars, daily butterflies or night moths. So it's possible to search for lepidopterists online, ask them about the species which we are breeding and ask for eggs or caterpillars. So after that, you can receive some, some host plants just in a forest, in a park. If this is native species, like for instance, for Saturnia appearing native plant species, apple, cherry, plum, black horn, walnut, elm. For this one, I use just walnut. Walnut, so very easy to breed it. And maybe a cherry as well, also possible to use. So I used walnut. So caterpillars are growing very fast. And how to use walnut? Yes, I just collected these leaves. Very simple, very easy way. Collect leaves like that and give it just to small caterpillars. Small caterpillars which just hatch out from eggs. I have caterpillars initially still my my friend sent me some eggs just for curiosity reason and for making some video. So these eggs produced larvae or caterpillars and caterpillars are sitting inside this jar. Here there is some kind of humidity inside and there are leaves of walnut like this. Many of them inside. Yes, these leaves inside. So caterpillars hatched already maybe three days ago and I do not show them because Many of them here, more than 20 
caterpillars sitting in two containers. Still, I keep them separately because they are small and can easily escape because sometimes, not sometimes, often, if you check leaves, caterpillars becoming very active in stress. So they're crawling around, trying to escape. And also they're making, they're coming to make in the new instars. So that's why we're crawling around and you can kill them. That's why container is small. <coughs> when we will be growing and more visible, <laughs> initially we have just size about one, two millimeters. Uh, second instar already has about six, seven millimeters size. We already made one, two, maybe instars. So now it's instar of a third or, se or th of second or third level. So th uh, second or third instar. Now here in size about six, seven, ten millimeters. So already visible, but very tiny and very fragile in in caterpillars of the first instar. So must be very careful. When we will be growing and much bigger, maybe more than 15 millimeters. So I can keep them separately, maybe in other big container to give them more fresh air and more capacity to move around because here a little bit space for 20 caterpillars. For 10, maybe good enough. Yes, maybe for 10 or less than for 10. This six liters container can be good enough. So they are not poisonous. Caterpillars are not poisonous. So easy to breed, very easy to breed. And by this moth, American moon moth, is pretty enjoyable. So you can recognize so very. In northern parts of Canada, this species produced, produces just only one generation. But in southern areas, closely like in southern areas in America, it may have two generations or three generations. So I guess in captivity, this species can produce also about three generations before overwintering in making just a, this type of cocoons somewhere in September time. So now it's time for second generation, maybe third one can be in August as well. So this is nice night moth, Saturnia, not Saturnia, so of family Saturniida, family Saturniida, in genus name, Arcteus, this is Luna, or American Muna moth. See, it's lovely, yeah, and you can see abdomen is pretty big one, white, covered with scales. But it was active now, it became a little bit calm and quiet. So far, so good. This is a story about American moon moth. How is it going on? If you are interested in some breed, in some caterpillars, in some lepidoptera moth, search for lepidopterists, ask questions in comments. So maybe some lepidopterists who are breeding different butterflies and night moths can write their comments or press likes. Or you can write which species do you keep at home? Is it difficult to keep them? And what are you doing with your collected material? Because sometimes if you have more than five, 10 specimens, they are dying and you can receive <laughs> more dead individuals. Sometimes of a good quality, maybe you are making kind of collection for to sell it. So write what are you doing with your collection, how it's interesting for people. I use this individual, this specimen just for educational purposes to create this video and maybe to show it for students in some exhibitions about entomology or in some lectures in entomology. So thank you for watching. Write your comments, ask your questions. And don't forget, stay Stand with Ukraine. Ukraine is fighting for independence. So for Ukraine is forever.
don't forget about it. Ukraine will win. Thank you for curiosity. Thank you for interest. And write if you are from other country than Ukraine. Write which country are you from. Write it in the comments. It will be interesting to know about our audience and your interest about insects, about moths and butterflies. Thank you for watching. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Bye bye. Good luck. Thank you for watching. Mike. Moth is coming to container for sleeping. So the size is about this one. Half of palm. So quite a big one. Thank you for curiosity. Subscribe to my channel and visit my Patreon page for donations. Thank you. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. And broadcast. Good luck.